For question number nine, the correct option is option one. And we can arrive at the solution quite quickly in one step by using the dimensional analysis. Let us see this first. Of the four options, you can see here the options one and two, they have similar form. They must be having the same dimensions, P upon three alpha K and P upon alpha K. While option three and option four, they must be having different dimensions. So I start with the very first option and find out the dimensions, whether it is the dimension of temperature, because the question is to find temperature that should be raised by an amount, right? So, of option one, they have given P upon 3 alpha K, where P is the pressure, alpha is the linear expansion coefficient of the solid material, K is the bulk modulus. That was option number one. Option number two was P upon alpha K. They are quite similar dimensionally. Therefore, I can choose any of them, say P upon alpha k. What is the dimensional formula of this? Dimensional formula of pressure by dimensional formula of linear expansion coefficient alpha. Dimensional formula of bulk modulus k. Now you know that pressure is forced by area. We can easily show that dimensional formula of pressure is m into l to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 2, isn't it? Force by area. Force is m l t to the power minus 2 Divide by L square, you get this. Dimensional formula of linear expansion coefficient, that is, unit is per degree Celsius or per Kelvin. Therefore, dimensional formula should be K to the power minus 1. Now, well, don't make a confusion. This K is standing for the dimension of temperature. And this K is standing for the bulk modulus. The bulk modulus is stress upon strain strain is dimensionless and stress is again forced by area the same dimensions as there are pressure so m into l to the power minus one t to the power minus two you can see the dimensions of pressure and bulk modulus cancel each other out and you have got dimension of temperature k only here so you understand both options one and two they have the same dimension as that of temperature and our choice should be between options 1 and 2. Options 3 and 4, they are dimensionally incorrect, we can just eliminate them. Now between 1 and 2, which one should we choose? From thermal expansion, you know that when there is a question of volume change, the volume coefficient is called gamma. This coefficient is given by thrice alpha, isn't it? Gamma is volume expansion coefficient, alpha is linear expansion coefficient. So a factor of 3 must be coming in any problem involving volume change. And keeping this in mind, you can choose easily option number 1. And that should be the answer. This way, you can get to the solution very quickly without any elaborate calculation. Option number 1 is the correct option. So that was a shortcut dimensional method to get to the solution quickly. And I suggest that in exams like this, where time is very valuable, don't waste any more time, move on to the next question. But having said that, let us see how you could solve the same question by a conventional method. I'm going to step number two, and we're talking of a cube under a pressure of P. Bulk modulus of cube material is K, that is given by volume stress by volume strain. Now if the pressure increases P, corresponding volume stress, that is compressive, stress is minus P. Volume strain is change in volume by original volume. From here we are getting delta V by V is equal to minus P by K and from here delta V is equal to minus P into V by K. Look here Delta V is the change in volume of the cube because of the pressure applied. P is the pressure applied. V is original volume. K is bulk modulus of the cube material. A minus sign is sitting because volume decreases, hence change in volume is negative. Now the question is, 
for what temperature rise the cube regains original volume see the volume has decreased by this because of pressure application by heating the increase in volume should be same in magnitude as this you can write by heating the expected increase in volume of the cube should be delta v modulus value that is absolute value of this which is pv upon k i'm calling it equation number one understand it once again under the pressure of p the volume changes by minus pv by k and to balance that temperature should be raised such that by heating the change in volume should be a positive value of the same magnitude that is delta v modulus that is pv upon k once we arrive here in step number four we will recall that in thermal expansion the change in volume of a body is given by delta v is equal to original volume v into coefficient of volume expansion that is called gamma into temperature change that is delta theta but since isotropic solid gamma is equal to thrice alpha alpha is given in the question so you can write it to be v into 3 alpha into delta theta once again here the volume coefficient gamma is thrice linear coefficient which is alpha therefore we are getting the increase in volume under heating should be delta v is equal to 3 v alpha into delta theta this is my equation number two now once you get these two equations one and two we'll compare them and solve for the temperature rise required wait for a moment so in step number five we compare equations one and two and you can write down that pv upon k must be equal to thrice v alpha into delta theta if the q has to regain its original volume and you can see from both sides v is cancelling out and delta theta is coming out to be p divided by thrice k alpha or alpha k whatever you say it let me write like the question is p upon 3 alpha k and it's obviously the solution which is the option number one so he chose that